on March just a hair but I'll try to keep it down as much as I can Better? yeah okay. of course it's not gonna matter because they're all going to come in here lapping blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's what they do let me see if I got everything I need here yes I do oh. no and uh, we should be pretty much live, I think. We should have sound and video, hopefully. Let me get a paper towel. And pretty much we should be off and running, I think. Hey, Big Bang, how are you? So, today, we are going to be doing something pretty cool. We're going to be painting a couple of good guys, Sam and Z. Now, uh, Sam is from the Blood Rage, and uh, I want to thank, uh, I really want to thank, um, uh, Pete Shirley, who's who's just a great guy. I couldn't have done half these episodes on Thursday nights if it wasn't for him um, supplying all the stuff. Um, these are his, and he asked that I paint them for him, and of course I would. Uh, I'd do anything for Pete from Cool Mini or not. He's been a great guy, and um, he's been itching for me to paint these to add to his collection. Now, to fit this all into an hour, I've had to take some shortcuts. So I will show you guys. Now Z here is from Rum and Bones, and of course Sam is from Blood Rage. So here's where we're at right now. Let's just put these boxes aside a little bit. Now I'm going to explain everything I did, but in order to fit this all into one hour, I needed to kind of take, I needed to take some shortcuts. So I'll explain each figure on what I did and how I went about doing it. But let's just start with Sam here, okay? Sam, if you look at his card, okay, well, that's, we got to make sure that we don't have the glare here. Sam is basically all armor with gold trim and a nice, very, very dark, almost like a navy blue cape on him. So what I decided to do particularly with Sam and let's just talk about him for a few minutes is I took an indigus blue uh, no excuse me uh, indigus incubus <laughs> darkness I'm sorry which is a shade from from Citadel and it's very very good hello everybody uh, just figure I'd say hi so in order to fit all this into the last one I had to just go over and do that I used a lead belcher over the armor and then I just use a retribution gold around and of course flesh and black first face on the back here I just put a very dark administrative gray in here but we're gonna lighten all that up now also what I did is I put a dark wash only on his his body so that armor would really mesh together and really come together and I'll show it to you uh, in a close-up when we get when I can get this uh, thing into focus now for Z Z we didn't put any washes on yet and that's the first thing we're gonna do because we're gonna let that dry and we're gonna work solely on Sam for a bit and then when that dries we're gonna come back and we are going to work on on Z so for Z here let me see if I can get this just a little closer so you guys can see a little bit better. Just bear with me for a second. Let me get my mouse because I have to turn on the autofocus. There we go. And let's just try to zoom in a little bit more. Move that up just a hair and over. And hopefully it'll focus. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So. Just give me a second to turn off the autofocus, and I think we'll be in pretty good shape here. There we go. I apologize for that. Boy, after all this time, I still can't get it right. 
So, we'd see, we, we made it very, very simple. We took a um, Tuscador fur, because if you look at this outfit of his, and as you can see how flamboyant he looks, all right, it's kind of a brownish, but it's almost got a little orange tint to it. So, this Tuscador, as you can see, kind of dank memes. Okay, Hitman, whatever. I have no idea what that means. So, uh, anyways, as you can see, that's right where we need to be. Okay. And we already got hate already, but that's okay. That This is the last one that you guys got to put up with. So, on the outside here, what we used is... And just to talk about it, we use Kesla Fesh for the face. We used a a, um, a dark. Oh, let me pull it out here. We use a dried bark for the eye patch and the boots. Okay. And of course, we use the Ushabi bone for the skull, and we just used a Zandri dust to start with for the kerchief that goes around his head. We used a lead belcher, which is a silver, for the sword. We used a retribution gold for the handle and his belt buckle and his medallions in here. And of course, a black for his mustache. So there we go. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a wash on on Z here and what that's going to do is really darken everything up and we're going to let that dry but we don't want to make it too thick or anything and we don't want it to take over the um, the actual figure so we're going to shake this up a little bit and we don't want to darken everything up to the point where it's... Oh, let me turn on that light. There we go. I want to make sure that you guys see it. So I'm going to try to do this backwards a little bit. So what I'm using here is an Agrath Earthshade. I really, really like this stuff. And it really, really does exactly everything that I need it to do. So we want to get a good amount on our brush here. And remember, like I always tell you with everything, just take your time and control the wash. So we're going to go over his face and over those medallions, and we're really going to work this wash all the way around here. So we can start to bring some depth. And you can see how that starts to bring out some of the things that we really want to do and put some, some form into this. Let's get a little bit more don't want to overdo it because it'll take forever to dry and we don't want to take forever to dry here and that's the main thing we're trying to wrap this all up in about 45 minutes to an hour and that's what we're trying to do so we're going to take and really kind of work that wash in here and you can see Z is just coming to form here What do they call him? Uh, what's with the final part in the title? Well, this is it. No more. Final's final. So, we are going to work this in on the back side here and you can see how this is all starting to come together a little bit and I'll show it to you guys really really good and we're, and what it does is it, it sits in those recesses especially on his back where he's got some nice creases there we really want that to get in there and dry properly so all right, so let's do some more here, just a little bit. And we want to get this really good on his head and work it into 
that whole area here and we want to work it into his thing but we're going to go back over this and we're going to kind of really <coughs> excuse me and you see how it just settles into the recesses here so this is really doing a nice job here it's bringing out his face and his structure it's kind of hard to see but we don't have fancy equipment here well we got good enough to do what we're doing that's for sure all right and just a little bit here on to the sword and into the back side here and voila fantastic and I'm just trying to move it around because I don't want it to pool up where it takes forever to dry because what I, we want to do is we want to be able to finish this guy really and really do a nice job with him we owe it to Z to make him look good well, the funny thing about this is and I, I kind of kind of laugh at this uh, Sam's a a little bit bigger than than Z in real life but Z's bigger has a bigger figure than Sam does so there you go so let's see let's just get a little more of that and we want to put this over Sam's head too because we want to we want to bring his face out we've already did a new oil over over Sam himself but now we want to bring out his facial structure so we don't want to soak him with this because we're going to be working on Sam himself in a minute you know we want to get a little on Sam's hands here and there you go there we go perfect all right so now we're just going to clean off this brush a little bit. And you can see where that wash really makes a, a big difference. Especially when it dries. It's really going to make a super, super di difference on this. So. All right, and I'm just going to take this dry brush and just kind of work this around a little bit more. Normally, we would just let it just sit in there a bit, but not today. No, sir, because we want to get this nice and dry. And it's okay if we get some of that to sit in the recesses and stuff, but we want to make sure that this guy dries. There we go. Perfect. Let's check Sam's head here. There you go, Sammy. We want to make sure that we get every bit of that skull of his, which he's famous for. All right, perfect. Now, while well, we got Z drying over here, which we'll put gladly over there, all right, we're going to take a look at Sam and take a real good look at him. And, um, sorry, I got distracted for a second there. Um, what we like to do here, okay, because we put such a dark new oil, we want to brighten this up a bit. So we're going to do those dry brushing and we're going to start bringing out some of those colors. Like on his back here, he has a fur, or it looks like a wolf's fur that, that covers him, and it's really pretty cool. This is actually a very, very nice nice uh, painting, to be honest with you. Uh, sculpture, excuse me. Excuse me, I'm going to take a quick sip, because I'm sure my dogs will be over at some point, and they'll come over and drink water. For the few of you that watch my channel, you know the inside joke. Because no matter what I seem to do on this table, because our outside is just filled with charity stuff lately, that we don't have room to do the painting outside anymore. 
But that'll change on Monday after I take care of all the patron drawings, which will be great. Now, I'm going to take a brush about this size, okay? Well, actually, I want something older because I'm going to be using it to dry brush. Maybe this might do. As you see, it's got a lot of flexibility, but maybe just too much for a dry brush. I want something a little stiff, but I want something old that I don't normally use all the time. Yeah, this might do it. Perfect. I think that's what we're going to do. Now, I have here, it's Rune Fang Silver. Very, very light silver. And because we use the Lead Belcher, which is a dark silver, we just want to go over and start popping out some of the metallics and start bringing them out. And that's exactly what we want to do here. So that's what we're going to do. All right. Now, oh, I've got to shake that a little bit more. Now, any of you can do this. This is just such a simple, simple and beautiful model. So if you have these, they're very detailed and very simple. Let me just explain a little bit of how I went about this. And since we're working on Sam a little bit and, and really, really go into detail to make sure that you guys um, 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 let's um, th so it's just really, really um, simple for you guys to do or any of these figures. What I did is I primed him black. OK, so once I had him black. I decided to take the lead belcher and do all the armor spots on him. That was the easiest thing to do. Then from there, I took the dried, the dried bark and used that for the brown here, for the staff, which is really kind of nice because what we're going to do is we're going to lighten that a little bit too. Now, once that all dried, I then took the incubus darkness which is just kind of a very darkish, darkish blue. It's just a sinister bluish color. And I just really, really just got that into all his clothing parts of it. Then with the gray, I decided to go over and paint all the gray areas. From there, I did his flesh with a kessel of flesh, which I just happened to have right out in front of us so you guys can see that. From there, I took black and I put his mustache in, his ponytail, and believe it or not, for some reason, they put hair on Sam. Now, we know for a fact, Sam doesn't have any hair. So, what we did was, uh, let me see here. Once I painted the um, black areas, then from there, I decided to take a Newland wash and go over the entire body. Okay. And then from there, I went and I point, painted in all the gold aspects of it. And for that, let's just show you exactly so you guys know exactly what the paint is here. It's a retribution armor, which is just a really, really, it's a little more expensive, but a very, very fantastic and wonderful gold that goes on very, very well. And I painted that very lightly with a very small brush. As a matter of fact, uh, I actually, it's a t size 10 here, which I have. I just bought a new one. You can get these at Hobby Lobby or anywhere. And what I did was from there, I just went over and did the outside lines of all the armor. Did the little dragons, some of the insignias. And then on his shield here, if you look, uh, trying to make this so you guys can see it really good. I very lightly went around the outside, did the middle buckle, and painted the dragon very slowly but carefully. It wasn't perfect, but once I went over again with a new wash, you'd be surprised at any mistakes you may have made. Guess what? They get covered up. Now, also you can see here that I did the gold outline. It's just a simple taking your time using the edge of your brush. And you can see he really looks regal. And that's what you're looking for. And you want to do honor to the good guy there.
So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this rune fang silver and we're just the uh, rune fang steel, excuse me. We're going to shake it up really, really, really good. And then we're going to get some on our brush here. So why don't I do that, huh? Oh, got to see where the camera is. And all I'm going to do is just get that on there. And I'm going to put it on there pretty heavily. And I want to make sure that I get it in the bristles really, really well. Okay. This is a junk brush. Hey, that's okay. Then what I want to do is I want to take some of it off, believe it or not. And I want to leave all that paint in one spot on my paper towel because I can come back to it. But I do want, see, I can just come back and get a little bit on there. Now the thing that I want to do here is I want to hit the edges of that sword. I want to come in here and I want to get the high spots nice and easy over. But I don't want to take any of that detail out that I put in there. So I'm just very lightly hitting some of these armor spots so they show up very well and just lightly going over just to bring a little bit of that out and you can see where it's starting to come out and it kind of works with the gold with a little bit over the top like he's been in battle for a while maybe he's been arguing with Tom or or Z or Eric or something you know one of the dice tower gang over a game he looks battle-worn from it. And that's what we want to do for our boy Sam here. And you can see his shoulders here. You want to bring that out. Bring those inner parts out, those nice flat spots. And you can see how that starts to come out. See how that comes out now? See how that just draws out? And it just really 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 just comes out and really really um, really just starts to bring that metallic out that's exactly what we're doing okay let's clean off this brush now now on the back there this guy and I don't think I pulled out that color but I think I'll I'll find one that I have I'm really, really happy with that. That's that's really good. And it looks like Z's drying pretty quickly, so that's great. What time do we got? 6.09? All right, we're doing fantastic, and we are 23 minutes in, and we're doing very, very well. All right. There we go. So let's put this aside. Let's get this out of the way here so we can see. And I'm going to go into my little bucket here. And I want to find the lightest gray that I have. Normally I would make my own gray, but we're trying to save some time here. All right, so we have an administrative gray here. See how nice and light that is compared to the dark light there? And this is where we're going to pull out some detail on this back area of his... Of his uh, his cape where it looks like he's got a wolf on him let me take a look here yeah it looks like he's he's has a wolf some wolf fur on there so we really want to accent that and really bring it out all right well I'm not gonna say really really or very very anymore so get your two drinks in now. <laughs> I know. I just try to explain how to do this as simply as I can. Okay, so I took some of that gray. And again, I'm doing the same thing that I, I've done before. I just take it and I put it here. And now I'm going to work it off. Because I don't want a lot of it. Yeah, it's waste and paint, but for the effect that I'm trying to achieve, it's really very, <laughs> you 
easy. How's that, Kabuki? All right. Okay, so now I'm going to put this aside because this is such a small area. We want to be careful. As you see, you got the bottom of this, so you make sure that your color's good, and I think we got that good. And then all we're going to do is just take our brush and easily just very lightly hit some of those high spots and really work that in there trying not to get it onto the main corset here there we go if we wanted to we could we could probably just highlight some of these areas with some of this gray but look look what that does see how that stands out now See how nice and, and, and that really pops and it really gives some depth and, and it really gives a majestic look to the figure. And let's face it, Sam's a majestic guy. Now what I want to do is I want to take the corner of my brush and just hit some of those high spots here. Just to give the whole figure just a hair of depth now I don't have to get any more paint I can just use the wet end of this and just work it in there a little bit got enough of what I need just very lightly hit the corners this brings a little depth to the character and the figure and gives him an appeal that he's just not one-dimensional or two-dimensional that he's actually three-dimensional and that's what we're looking for put shadows and gives and shadows are everything shadows are just an illusion of things that give depth and shade all the things that we want to do with this wonderful, wonderful figure. And you can see I'm just working enough in here, keeping the darkness of the of the cloth, but just working the shadows. Because if it just was one color, it wouldn't make any sense. And you can see how how powerful he looks now. and how he stands out commanding it looks like well, kind of looks like that dude right there right and that's exactly what we were going for so there you go now I'm going to take a little of this off here Let's see what we can do here. Now, here's where I have a difficult... We're going to actually put him aside there so you guys can get a good gander at. And let's work, work on my boy Sam. Not Sam, uh, Z. All right, so just looking around, it's really kind of worked out pretty nicely. But now we've got to bring... We've darkened this up, so now we really kind of want to lighten it up a little bit. So it's time to get that small brush that I had that I was using. We kind of just hit some of those areas that we were looking to do. Now let's see here. Yeah, we have that Tolarian sand, which would be perfect. Perfect for what we're trying to dig out. Now the thing that I'm kind of torn about and I want to show you guys is here on the scale it looks like there is a yellow type of bandana on I just don't think know if the yellow is really going to show up very well but I don't want to leave it tan because then it kind of blends in with everything else so why don't we address that first because again we want to do honor to this figure it's after all 
salmon Z and you just don't want to make it look bad. You want to do the best you can here. We're not the greatest painters, but we do try very hard. All right, so I'm going to take this brush, I think, for this yellow. So we're going to put the yellow on. We're going to see how the yellow goes over. Hopefully it does go over. We'll have to see. So we're going to use a flash gets yellow. I think that would be perfect for what we're trying to accomplish here. And what we're going to do, well, let me bring this in here so you guys can see. Move that out of the way. And we're just going to paint that yellow. And it was what I was afraid it was going to do. Just not look very good. It's going to need more than one coat, but that's okay. We can fix that. I just don't know if we'll be able to get all the coats in before the end of the show. Hmm. I don't care for it to be honest. But that's what they show it as, so that's what we'll have to go with. And I'm just going to paint that on there, paint that on there, and again, it's okay. We'll clean it up a little bit and there we'll let that dry and then we'll throw another coat on and then I think that will sell it pretty good first coat's not going to look that hot but that's the way it kind of looks on the thing so that's the way we'll go with it all right now let's go to our next thing that we noticed about the Z figure. And let's get this on here. We'll leave this yellow over here because we've got to do one more coat once it dries. First coat never goes on good with yellow. Yellow's a very tricky color. All right, what was I looking for? Um, I think it was the Tolarian Sand. Nope, that's not it. Uh, there, 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 there. Sandry dust. Nope. Uh, that'll probably work. Let's go with it. So now we're going to take a Tolarian sand. And what we're going to do is everything that we darkened up, we kind of want it to stand out a little bit. Rob, does the title indicate that you aren't going to be doing DT videos any longer or just painting videos. Rob, just started battling brushes blood bowl segment with Sam. I would die for micro macro lens on that video camera. Huh? Okay, I don't understand that. Uh, I'll answer all your questions at the end of this video. So please be patient. Thank you. All right. So now what we want to do is right here, as gently as we can, is keep the nice, um, really want to work this in here, but we want to make sure that we keep the wash that we worked in. Okay, we don't want to lose any of the depth of it, but we don't want to we don't want to lose all the work that we put into this figure here. Now here, you kind of want to just be very very careful with how we go about going in here, and you're just kind of going over very lightly, very lightly all everything that you've already done, nice and light. And we need a little more paint there. You can see what I'm doing. I'm bringing that back, but but leaving the um, making sure that that I have I have enough of that wash still covering. <laughs> yeah, just wouldn't be a video without my dogs.
just wouldn't be a video without my dogs. Would it now, guys? One drinks, then the other comes in and drinks because they were just outside playing. So I apologize for that, but hey, like I've always told you, hi, hi, how are you? Hope you guys had fun outside. Good girls. Go play. Go play with Sissy. They're good girls. Thirsty girls, but good girls. Alright, so again, we're just trying to get enough in here. I'll tell you, if you watch on my channel, which I know a lot of you don't, but you'll recognize the fact that those puppers love to drink water. They love running outside and just being pups. Now you see how that, that's coming out now? You see how that starts to stand out? Boom, just like that. And it's really easy, guys. This is all just having a plan in your head. Always plan your figures ahead of time. If you're going to paint 10 figures, the same figures, do it so you can do it at the fastest. While one part of it's drying, you're working on another part. And just stay consistent. Once you get that rhythm and, that, and just being consistent, just have the vision for it, and it'll come to you. Sometimes you'll run into some roadblocks. We all do. That's the, that's the art of it. Sometimes you just run into roadblocks. But it'll come together. It always comes together. And just nice and easy with the small. And boom, there you go. Everything that we could have asked for. Right there, just like that. I think that's looking pretty good there. Especially that lighter color. I was a little worried about that we would lose it. The dogs wait till Rob's on camera and to drink loudly. Very true. Uh, those two minis, I need more practice. It's not practice. Just enjoy yourself. If you put too much pressure on yourself, it's not fun then. The whole fun of it is just being able to express yourself and do the things that you really love to do. And I think that's the most important thing. All right, so let's go back to that yellow, and let's just touch that up a little bit. I think that's dry enough now where we can kind of go over that, maybe even get that to where we're happy with it. See, no offense, Sam, but we have to spend a little more time with Z. I hope you don't mind. And as you can see, we're just really just taking that yellow and working it into these areas and really just making sure that we got this covered very, very well. There we go. Uh, uh, okay, I'm trying to paint backwards, which is upside down. So forgive me if I'm falling off camera a little bit, but I'm trying to do it so you guys can see it. So it's kind of like if you were playing baseball, trying to swing while standing on your head. Not the easiest thing. All right. And here we go. There we go. Just nice and easy. And that's all we're trying to accomplish here. Taking our time making sure that we hit all the areas <laughs> perfect that's all we can ever ask and just moving that paint around letting your brush control the paint all right much better now, we want to lighten up that whole outfit of his a little bit. So we're going to stay with the same brush. 
What time are we at? Wow, 40 minutes. Just like I, I figured. Excellent. All right. So this Tuscagore fur, which you can get at any hobby store uh, that carries GW paints at least, um, is very key. And I really think a nice color that kind of works perfectly with this particular uh, outfit. So we're just going to take a little bit of that. And I messed up a little area here, so I want to make sure that I bring that out. Because everybody messes up. You just got to know how to fix it, that's all. So I'm just kind of... Just kind of doing that. There we go, into there. And I'm just kind of, just nice and lightly hitting some of the edges here. As you can see, I don't want to lose that, don't want to lose all that work I did with that wash. That wash did a lot of work, so I'm just hitting the edges so it gives some depth. Let the wash really do the work there. And the high spots just bring out the color again. Bring out some of the stuff here. Really bring that color back that we want and let it sit on the high spot. Like right here. That's okay if you just kind of blend. You take your brush and whatever paint you have on it, just very lightly just kind of blend it over the top of the high spots. Don't take that wash out. That's all you want to do. And you can just dance your brush in here nice and easy. Even on the bottom here. Do the same exact thing. Nice and easy over the tops. And there you go. And we got his beard and we got everything working really, really good. Perfect. Now I've got one more thing to do. And I'll finish exactly on time like I thought. All right. Uh, what was the last thing I wanted to do? Oh, of course. Kessel Flesh. this I do want to take a little bit of this paint off okay and what I'm doing is I'm taking the flesh color and there's a reason for this because we don't want the wash to really wash out their features so without being rude they have bald heads so we really want to make sure that you see that their heads are not all just they're not very dark so we want to lighten that up and we want to make sure that we do a little bit of the features there and not lose the cheekbones that we've established but we don't want to get his his uh, goatee that would be a big mistake there and that would be very bad and of course his chest as you can see, they really made him pretty manly the way he is anyways, right? And same thing with Sam. We just kind of want to go over the forehead. Um, normally, I would do the whole head, but let's face it. On this particular model, our boy Sam, he has hair. He just decided to shave his head. There we go. All right. I don't think those are very bad at all. We got some hate, but hey. 
what else is new? Let's see if we can just zoom up a little bit better and take a look at these guys. Uh, take my headset off. Bring my mouse up. And squirrel over there a little bit. Whoops. There we go. And whoops. I don't know if I can get much closer, guys. Eh. My hands aren't helping you any. Uh, nope. <laughs> Well, there you go. I think that's about as good and as close as I'm going to get. And there's the two figures. Now, just to go over um, Z a little bit. Uh, let me just uh, do this real quick. Take this off and just talk a little bit about the Z figure real quickly. If you see here, of course, uh, we, we spray painted, um, uh, well, we primed with a gray. Okay, from there, I painted the Tuscador. Um, well, actually, I went with the uh, Tolerant Sand. I did all that area, and I covered most of the model with it. It's a lighter color, so it, would, it was easier to go over. Then, what I did is from there, is I took that Tuscador fur, and I painted all the areas. Now, if you look on the bottom, I know it's hard to see, but they are striped pretty much and if you look on here you can see that everything's kind of striped in here and I put all those stripes in but I just took my time with a smaller brush but I didn't do that until after I had the undercoat then with that dried bark we just painted the the boots we did a uh, lead belcher for the sword we did the retribution armor for the uh, handle, his belts, and his gold medallions that he has. And the skull, we used the Yashabi bone, which we could probably touch up the skull a bit, but we're kind of running out of time with an hour almost done. And I'm happy with pretty much the way they are. I'll probably touch them up just a little bit, especially when they're going to my friend Pete. And I can't thank Pete enough for all the great things that he does. Ugh. So there we go. Let me put my thing on here. And up we go. Oh, you didn't need to see that. <laughs> you really don't need to see that either. So, that's it. The very final painting with Rob Live. For last year, I've been very lucky to do this and very, very happy to do this. It kind of goes back to when I was nine years old. When I was nine years old, I had a pile of comic books and a friend's father had thrown out a model magazine. I had taken them and put them all onto my kitchen table and I sat there and I went through them. And I opened up the very back and I was just intrigued with the models. I saw in the back that for $1.98, gotta remember this is like the 70s, and at nine year old, it was like the greatest thing. A magazine was the most perfect thing that you can ever have. And for $1.98, I could get a kit to paint with and 12 models for one, a model a month for a whole year. Well, I went out and I mowed as many lawns as I could, and I was fortunate enough to save up the money and I was able to send away for it. But each month, I waited with bated breath for those models to come. And I was able to imagine things and do things that I never dreamed I would ever be able to do. I would paint helicopters and dream I was a helicopter pilot or just a, a World War II aircraft and dreaming someday of flying in a plane. Being able to color my world was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. 
when I decided to do this a couple of years ago for the Dice Tower, I had a chance and only one thing that I ever wanted to do was to be able to reach out and touch somebody and make a difference to somebody. To maybe have somebody just for once that never did pick up a brush and give it a try and see how they color their world. For me, that was the only goal I ever had. Now, as you can see, even, even here with the thumbs down, there's some people with black and white vision that never saw that. They never saw that whatever I tried to do was just simply make things simple, easy, and fun so that maybe somebody, I can inspire somebody to spend time with their daughter or son or maybe just find something in the darkest of times and be able to paint and enjoy themselves. I never imagined that I'd have so much reach and the wonderful letters I've gotten from people from the Netherlands, the UK, Australia, South America, Argentina, Canada. I never dreamed that would happen. I never dreamed that I would be able to come into so many living rooms and all points between. For me, it was moving beyond words and I never, just never imagined that I would have that kind of effect or even even to reach one of you was all the gold I ever ever wished for I um, <clears throat> I've always enjoyed doing this and I've it's been a passion of mine but now it has come to an end so as of today this is the last painting with Rob live I want to thank you so much for letting me into your homes and your laptops and your computers and your devices. It's meant the world to me and to be able to reach out and just try to make a difference has been so powerful to me and to my family to turn on that camera and let you into our lives as well. It's been one of the most rewarding experiences in my life. I can think of only a couple of things that have only mattered to me and that's marrying my wife, having my children, and finding my passion for painting again and how much I love the color of the world. So I will leave you with this. The world with technology is a very small place but it's still a very very large world and if you just have the vision and take your paintbrush you can paint the world and color it your way and just enjoy life and color your world to your vision. With that, thank you and good night.